ever wonder where the people of Tokyo go to spend some quality time in the sun and the surf? Today we're taking a quick trip to the cozy coastal town of Ito Onsen in Shizuoka, right along the shores of Sagami Bay. We'll experience some amazing train rides, swimming in the ocean, mouth-watering food, and a beachside fireworks display to cap it all off. But enough chit-chat, let's go. It's bright and early. It's like 5.30 in the morning here, and we are headed out to Ito in Shizuoka to one of our favorite little beach towns. We're gonna go for a fireworks display and we're gonna go check it out and see how uh, the people in Ito celebrate their summer festivals. So come on along, let's go, and uh, we'll see you down there. Today's adventure starts out with four trains and about four hours of travel, and yes, it's all worth it. We're catching one of the earliest trains to try to squeeze every drop out of our day. But first, what's an early morning train ride without a solid hit of Combini coffee? Gotta shake off those cobwebs somehow. There's something magical about early mornings in Japan. Empty streets, that soft sunrise glow, everything feels just a bit more special. As we enter Musashi Mizunokuchi Station, I can feel the excitement already building. Today is gonna be epic. Here's the route. We start from Musashi Mizunokuchi, hop on the Nambu line, and head to our first transfer at the prominent Noborito Station. From Noborito Station, we'll board the Odaku line and head all the way down south to the beautiful castle town of Odawara. Once we get to Odawara, We'll be changing trains once again for the JR East train on the Tokaido line to head to the gateway of Shizuoka, the resort town of Atami. For the final leg, we'll be boarding the magical black ship train on the Izu Kyuko line to continue our journey down the coast of the Izu Peninsula to our destination of Ito Onsen. Welcome to Noborito Station. It's a major hub. You can catch the Odaku line here to head up to Tokyo or, like us today, down to the bay. Noborito Station's claim to fame is that it's home to the famous Doraemon cartoon and it's got some awesome Doraemon theme art lining the walls. It's not even 6 a.m. yet, but it's already beginning to heat up. It's gonna be one of those classic Japanese summer days. The leg from Noborito to Odawara is the longest, but it's pure countryside bliss. It's a two-hour ride, and it might be super early, but who cares when you've got views like this? Odawara is another gem of a town, famous for its beautiful castle and its savory food. But we'll save that for another video. Today we're focused on making it to Ito Onsen. From Odawara to Atami, we're hugging the coastline of Sagami Bay. With the sun rising over the water, the views are just stunning. Atami's gorgeous, no doubt about it, but we're here for one reason. The Kurofuni Densha, or the Black Ship Train. This train's all about history and style, paying homage to Commodore Perry's arrival in Japan way back in 1853. And check this out, side-facing seats. You get to enjoy the Pacific Ocean without straining your neck. Perfect. The black ship train deserves a video all of its own, so stay tuned for our deep dive into this train and its sister train, the King May train, in the next episode of our Densha series. Ito Onsen's history stretches all the way back to the Nara period, from 710 to 794 AD, and it even gets a mention in the ancient text Izu no Kune Fudoki, the oldest compilation of the region's folklore and geography. Over the centuries, samurai, monks, artists, and writers have all flocked here to enjoy the healing properties of the hot springs. 
Today, it's a beach town with cool waters and dark volcanic sand. Perfect for a relaxing getaway. And here we are, Ito Station. We made it. After over four hours on the rails, stepping off that last train feels like stepping into vacation mode. The station itself is a real looker, clean, bright, and full of character. It's like Ito's way of saying, welcome, relax, you're on beach time now. Let's go explore Ito's shopping streets. Okay, so it's about 9.15. We've made it to Ito. Ito is a little beach city here in Shizuoka. It's uh, one of our favorite beach towns. And we're gonna be walking around, uh, going to the beach, and we're gonna go check out a hanabi, a fireworks display that starts later in the evening once it gets a little darker. So uh, come with us. I wanna show you a little bit of the street I'm on right here. So let me turn you around. I absolutely love the small shopping streets here in Ito. The retro vibe is undeniable, but what really stands out is their sense of humor. Check out this banner at the end of this street. It's got a dad joke, both in Japanese and English. The top line reads, Ito no Hoshi, which translates to the star of Ito. The second line, the biggest one, says Ito Izumi, meaning Ito Hot Springs. But here's where it gets fun. The last line combines Japanese and English into a pun. See that first kanji? It means hot water and it's pronounced you. So the whole banner actually reads, the star of Ito, Ito Hot Springs. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Sorry, I couldn't resist. That meme lives rent free in my head. Just a short walk and we're at our hotel, the Tokyo Harvest Club, right on the Ito River. Now it's a nice place and all, but honestly, I'm not the type to stay cooped up in a hotel room when there are sights to see. That being said, this view from our room is totally worth stopping to take in. But enough about that. Let's drop off our luggage, throw on some swimwear, and make our way down to the beach. Welcome to Orange Beach, just a quick walk away from the city center. With its dark volcanic sands and cool waters, this is the perfect spot to escape the summer heat. The beach has a lot going on, from floating diving platforms with inflatable slides to a picnic house where you can chill in the shade for lunch. And about 300 meters, or 985 feet offshore, there are concrete jetties that keep the waves at a distance, making the waters calm and ideal for a relaxing dip. This right here is why we got up at 5 a.m. and rode for four hours on the train. Totally worth it, right? This is the life. After a fun day at the beach, and maybe a few beers, it's time to hunt down some dinner. Along the narrow streets of Ito's small downtown districts, there are a ton of great little restaurants. One of the great things about Ito is that you never have to worry about finding a great restaurant or even getting a reservation. Tonight we're headed to Umehara, a cozy little izakaya that seats about 20 people. It specializes in local Ito cuisine and it's the kind of place where you know everything is going to be delicious. Let's kick things off with some local sake and an ice cold beer. This is local sake from the area where we're visiting right now and it's so delicious. This stuff is brewed right here in Ito, and let me tell you, it's smooth, refreshing, and it pairs perfectly with everything on the menu. So this is what they call service. This is what you get when you sit down. You don't order it. It's just given to you. It's kind of the first thing they give you before you eat. It's like an appetizer. Um, they welcome you to their restaurant by giving you their special dish um, and it's so delicious. Tonight's service? Glass noodles and a savory dashi broth. Simple but packed with flavor. Now you know I had to try these. So Fish tenders, or as the menu calls them, ito nagetto. Lightly breaded, crispy on the outside, tender and flaky on the inside. 
basically the ocean's answer to chicken nuggets. So delicious. And of course we can't leave without sampling some sashimi. The sashimi here in Ito is so fresh. We're right here on the coast. And this fish is served fresh daily. This is probably the most delicious sashimi you'll have in your entire life. So let's give it a try. Delicious. Delicious. The raw fish in Ito is as fresh as it gets, caught daily from the surrounding waters. This right here is sashimi at its finest. No fancy sauces, just the natural taste of the sea. And let's not forget the real wasabi. You can never go wrong with a little fresh, all-natural wasabi. Now, real wasabi, real wasabi is very fibrous. It's not a paste. It's, it's actually chewy. And it is one of my favorite Japanese delicacies. It also makes me cry, but I love it. So, here's to you, wasabi lovers. That's real wasabi. It's chewy. It's pulpy. Oh, and it gets you right here in the side of this. Now, no trip to Ito is complete without trying their local star, Kinmeidai, or Golden Eye Snapper. That's melt in your mouth delicious. One of Ito's most famous fish is called Kinmei. It translates to golden eye. It's a red fish with a gold eye, and it's so delicious. Mm. One of the best things about Kinmen is the sauce. The sauce is signature to this area, and it's sweet, and it tastes a little bit like honey, Delicious. Now that we've fueled up on some of Ito's most delicious food and beverages, it's time to head back to the beach for the fireworks display. On our way, we should stop back by Ito Station and check out that lantern display. It's one of the first sights you'll see when you get off the train, and at night, it glows like something out of a samurai anime. Not bad, right? As we get closer to the beach, you'll notice more people dressed in yukata, the traditional summer robes for the Hanabi Matsuri. Think of them as a light, breezy cousin to the kimono, perfect for these sweltering summer nights. And of course, no Matsuri outfit is complete without a fan tucked into the back of your obi belt. Classic Matsuri vibes. We've made it to the beach just in time for the opening volley of fireworks. Let's sit back and enjoy the show. Fireworks, or Hanabi, are an absolute must during Japan's summer festivals. It's like no matter where you are in the world, fireworks just bring out the oohs and the ahs in everyone. Some things are just universal, am I right? As the fireworks come to a close, it's time to head back up the Ito River and check out a small street festival we passed earlier and to catch one of Ito's most unique art installations, the Take Akari Bamboo Lights. This little street monster is the perfect spot to hang out after the fireworks. It's got everything. Festive lights, food trucks, games for kids. It's like a mini country fair mixed with a flea market. And get this, there's even a game where you can win different types of beetles. 
Yeah, Japanese kids are really into catching insects. Who knew? After one last look around, it's time for the real highlight of the evening. Ito's famous bamboo light installation called Take Akari. The installation features thousands of hollowed out bamboo pillars lit from within and it's meticulously crafted by Japanese artisans. This breathtaking display was designed by Chikaken, a group that specializes in sustainable art. The bamboo, which tends to overgrow in Japan, is repurposed into these stunning lanterns illuminating the riverbanks with a warm, gentle glow. What makes it even more special is the meaning behind it. Take Akari symbolizes hope, unity, and respect for nature. It's a reminder that even in modern life, we're still deeply connected to the natural world. Walking through this display, surrounded by hundreds of bamboo lights, feels almost magical. And, as if the bamboo lights weren't enough, the whole thing is set against the backdrop of the Ito River, with reflections of the historical Tokai Khan Museum. At one time, this was a bustling inn and bathhouse. Now it stands as a beautiful reminder of days past, shimmering on the water. It's like stepping into the world of a Ghibli movie. Sadly, it's time to wrap up our journey and head back to Tokyo. As we return to Ito Station, we're reminded of the amazing times we've had here. While we wait for the train, let's check out this cool little station. Trains from Ito run every 20 to 30 minutes, so if you've got some time to kill, there's a souvenir shop and a nice seating area to cool down in. Oh, and don't miss the tourist info booth where you can learn more about everything Ito has to offer. For our return trip, we're hopping aboard the Kinmei Densha, Shizuoka's other famous train. Like its sister, the Kurofune Densha, this is also a Resort 21 series model, but the Kinmei Densha is painted red and decked out in a playful fish motif that celebrates Shizuoka's iconic Kinmei Snapper. With side-facing seats that offer incredible views of the coast, it's the perfect way to travel back to Tokyo in style. Trust me, you'll want to snag a window seat. The train ride along the Izu Peninsula is definitely one of my favorite coastal journeys in Japan. Between the stunning views, the beautiful beaches, and the amazing food, it's hard not to fall in love with this region. If you're looking for a quick getaway from Tokyo, Shizuoka, and especially the town of Ito Onsen, should definitely be on your list. There are lots of trains to choose from, but if you can, try to catch one of these two iconic rides. As we say goodbye to the Kinmei train, we're already dreaming of our next trip down this beautiful coast. And of course, more Kinmei cuisine. And just like that, we're back in Tokyo after an amazing weekend in Shizuoka's sleepy little beach town of Ito Onsen. We hope you have enjoyed the trip and that you found a new place to visit when you come to Japan. If you discovered a spot that you really like, why don't you tell us about it down in the comments below. If you like this video, please subscribe to American Tour Heads in Japan. If you've made it this far into the video, then you must be a fan of the channel and a fan of Japan and Japanese culture. So if you'd like to support us to make more videos and more content like this, Think about going to our Patreon page at patreon.com the hair. It's been great having you along this weekend and we hope to see you again in future videos. As we part ways, remember, keep your eyes on the road and as always, stay safe out there.